Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Time Machine. I'm Harper, and today I'm talking about art styles. More specifically, how to find yours. Sometimes it feels like you're playing Pokemon Go in a haunted forest full of apparitions and tiger traps. But don't worry, friend, because we're going to walk through that forest together and find your style. Okay, here's how it's going to go down. First, I'm going to shatter this whole myth about finding your art style. Then I'm going to quickly go over a few of the ideas that you've probably already heard about art styles and why they're important. And finally, I'm going to tell you a secret about art styles that I've never seen in another YouTube artist video. And no, it doesn't take years and it's not hard to do. As a matter of fact, if you're even a little bit serious about drawing, illustration, and making art, I guarantee you're already doing it. So, to start this little poke safari off with a bang, let's check out a great tip from the rad designer and artist, James Victore, whose new book, Feck Perfection, offers a three-word quote about finding your art style that sums it up perfectly. It's not hiding. Boom! Yeah, your art style? Don't go looking for it. Also, don't go chasing waterfalls. I heard that once. Thanks, TLC. Now, some people think that art styles are like finding a kung fu style. Which of the strike and block combinations is right for you? Drunken monkey, flying claw, the crane, the crab, tiger fist, dragonfly, mantis, shooting sleeves? I don't know. I mean, you can train to learn any of these styles, but does that make them yours? Nope. They're all just different ways to fight and defend. You got to bring your own special something to the art battle. And that's what's going to set you apart from all the extras who get kicked, chopped, stabbed, punched, and choked right out of the movie. <laughs> you got to admit, that's a pretty sweet analogy. Moving on. Is your style hiding in a class somewhere? A video? A book? Do you think you'll find it by looking at a bunch of other people's art? Or maybe you'll meet someone who will turn your idea of art on its head, and then you'll find your style. No! No, 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 no! All of these things are great, and will show you new ways to express yourself, but your style is not Waldo. It's not lost. Matter of fact, how to find your art style is the wrong question, because you don't find it you learn it. And the way you do that is by doing the work. So here's some of the work you can do to help point you in the direction of your art style. Number one, draw a lot. I mean a ton. Yeah, even more than that, keep going. Actually, this is the answer to 87% of any art question you have. Draw more. Because it's the foundation that everything else is built on. Number two, try different tools and techniques. That's what's gonna help you render your style. Charcoal, pencil, ink, watercolor, acrylic, oil, printmaking, colored inks, collage, pastels, chalk, markers, to infinity and beyond. Number three, copy the styles of artists you like. It's a good idea because it'll help you practice different techniques and copying is a classic way of learning. But there's a pitfall that you'll want to watch out for. Let's say that you love Hellboy, so you study and practice drawing the characters from the book and now you can draw Hellboy comics better than Mike Mignola himself. Cool, but you're always going to be the person who draws like somebody else. The second best Mike. Boring. I went through the same phase for a long time. I jumped from one favorite to another. I wanted to paint like Robert Williams, Simon Bisley, Glenn Barr, Bill Sienkiewicz, and Robert McGinnis. I wanted to draw like Dave McKean, Paul Pope, Duncan Figueroa, Ralph Steadman, or with the stark brutality of the martial law artist Kevin O'Neill. Now I certainly learned a bunch of cool tips and tricks from aping those artists, but none of their styles were mine. Okay, number four, 
read books and watch tutorial videos on different ways to make art. I mean, how the hell do you even make a copper etching anyway? Or number five, you could just skip all that stuff and adopt a cat and name her Frida Kahlo or Catlo. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard this stuff a million times, but here's the thing. While all of these suggestions are helpful, well, except for that whole cat thing. Who's the best dog in the world? Mwah. They're not going to help you find anything. So here's what you do. Now listen, when I tell you what it is, you might roll your eyes and say, whatever, dude, nice clickbait video. But the next day, or in two weeks, or a month from now, you'll be doing these fun, simple exercises, and it's going to click for you. You'll get it. And then you're going to smile and say, you know what? That time machine dude on YouTube was right. I mean, we all thought he was nuts when he drew a hundred farts in one day in that challenge video he made, but wow, I think he's really on to something here. All right, here's the secret. Your art style, it's going to happen on accident. Naturally. Yep, it's going to sneak up on you. You'll be drawing or painting or making a monotype print one day and you'll look back at the last few things you've made and you'll know that this is your style. Now, here's three specific examples of when you will see your true style. Number one, phone doodles. Yep, those fun little scratchy drawings when you're only half paying attention to what you're doing. It's automatic drawing. That's your style. Number two, when your teacher or boss is droning on and on in class or a meeting, and instead of taking notes, you're drawing faces or spaceships or monsters in the margins of your paper. That's your style. Number three, if you've been drawing a lot, it'll show up in your sketchbook when you're just farting around, sketching, and listening to music. That's your style. So then what you want to do is take that natural way of drawing, the automatic stuff that just comes out when you're not overthinking it, you want to take that and mold it and refine it into your style. So once you know what your art style is, one of the next questions you might ask is, is it better to have one recognizable style or be able to do a bunch of different styles? And this question, obviously, is more for people who want to make art and illustration for money. Get paid! You would think that it would help you to get more work if you could make different kinds of stuff. Realistic, cartoony, and abstract, with pen and ink, watercolor, acrylics, markers, charcoal, or fine liners, right? But no, it's not. The people who are potentially going to hire you usually have a specific look or style in mind that they want for the job. I know, it's a total bummer, because I like to make art in a bunch of different styles too. Now there is an exception to this, and it would be if you worked in-house for a company who uses a few different styles in their products and advertising. In that case, it's helpful if you can wear a few different style hats. But if you're trying to freelance or build a following or name as an illustrator, for example, you need to think of yourself as an ice cream flavor, or a house paint, or chicken parmesan. What in the hell are you talking about, son? When people go to an Italian restaurant and they order a standard from the menu, like chicken parm, they want it to be exactly what they expect. No guessing. They know what they want. Same with illustrators, cartoonists, and other 2D artists. Give them what you're known for. Your style. Let's say that you've built an audience around watercolor floral paintings and an art director gives you an assignment for an illustration in Home and Garden magazine. And instead of pretty flowers, you send them an ink drawing of a cartoon monster. The client will not abide. They're going to want their money back because they didn't get what was advertised. So there it is. Your style is not lost and therefore cannot be found. Study other artists, read books and watch tutorials, try a bunch of tools and techniques and make a lot, I mean a truckload, of art. 
Make it loose and sloppy. Make it tight and clean. Which way feels the best? Which way comes natural with practice? What's the flavor of what you're trying to express or put on paper? Speaking of, maybe your style isn't on paper at all. Try sculpture, paint on a jacket, draw on shoes, digital animation, try a little cut print or an etching. How about encaustic or batik styles? And remember, relax. Stop trying so hard. Your style will appear when you're ready. (laughs) Damn, I should have made this whole video based on an episode of Kung Fu. Time for you to leave. And for even more hot sketchbook action, cool stories about art and life, and dad jokes, check out these rad videos right here. And if you thought this video was better than getting your prostate checked, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon so you'll never miss another sketchbook video right here on the Time Machine. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.